Um, and now back to the end. Speaking of turncoats and people who will turn on you, uh, Enzo Lopes. What's up, Cooksy Mob? Hey, how we doing? So I'm going to continue with the kind of taking a look at guys' seasons, how it went, and what to expect from them in 2024. Last one we did was Deegan and Hunter Lawrence. I thought it was pretty good. Now I'm going to go to the other side. Guys who had horrible seasons, bad seasons. Um, and I'm going to just start with Austin Forkner. He couldn't have had much worse of a, a season. And then I want to touch on the Enzo Lopes situation. While he had a pretty good season, it didn't really end the way it, it should have. They made some fatal mistakes in, in doing some different stuff. And he could have easily fixed it. But I'll explain all that, guys. Before we do that, check out Complete Racing Solutions. You guys know Coach Rob. Get yourself a program. They start, they're so cheap. It's like two cups of coffee. We'll get you on a program with Coach Rob and get you dialed in. Epic Garage Designs. Check out the floors. You can get a two-car garage for $17.95. Make your garage look badass. Drop ship anywhere. They're, you can install them yourself. They're not super difficult. You might have to make a couple cuts, but no big deal. Ride Strapped. Check out Ride Strap, Dude, they have the coolest shirts, goggles, glasses. Check out Ride Strapped. Um, they'll get you dialed in. That's a patriotic company that I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, and then Precision Transport. If you didn't ship anything, I've already had a couple of you guys reach out. Using Precision Transport, such a good move. Customer service is not, it, like, it's, it's weird how in this generation, not a lot of people believe in that. They still do, so check them out. All right, guys, let's get into this. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So Austin Forkner. Damn, has anyone had it worse in the last few years? I, have to, I can't just run back 2024 with how unlucky he was because he was essentially absent. I mean, what he did was this started, he was on a run back in the day. He was winning Supercrosses, was easily going to be the East Coast Supercross champion. And then it all unraveled. He tears his ACL. He tries to ride with a torn ACL, which didn't really cause any extra damage, I don't think. But... You know, he showed that he has heart. He tried, you know, unfortunately, he lost that championship to Chase Sexton. So he sits out, gets healthy, comes back, and then he, the next season, this was the first season, this was the season, I think it was 2020, uh, right when things went sideways in the world. Well, people forget that championship, he had it. The last round, he was in a position to win the championship, and then he had that horrific injury like internal injuries rib injuries concussion i mean it was bad so i actually ended up breaking my pancreas in like half i broke like a third of my pancreas off and um basically damaged a bunch of my internals my liver and kidney and a bunch of just basically damaged all my insides and um messed up my spleen really bad to the point um that they had to take part of my pancreas that like third of my pancreas and my spleen uh, my whole spleen uh completely out so a lot of right, so that's two supercross championships that were in his palm of his hand and got away well then he comes back and not so good. And then he sits out the outdoors. He's going to get ready. 2024's on the horizon. Or wait, no, no, I forgot. Last year he comes back. He's going to, you know, just get through the season, right? He's going to ride smart. No more big injuries. And then he's the victim, innocent victim of Jet Lawrence, of all people, accidentally cross-jumping him and breaking his collarbone. And then he comes back. But then he actually sits out the outdoors with some other injury. Let's line it up for 2024 is kind of what the program was. Coming into 2024, he made it about 30 yards down the straightaway. Bam! Blows out his knee. I mean, it was, it was pretty bad. Well, he's tough as nails, and, you know, he's got so much talent. And if you look where he was, you know, it, it's pretty impressive to see that he's still doing this. And before you shed too many tears, he's also signed some pretty fat contracts, and he's had the opportunities. So a lot of guys get hurt. They never get another opportunity. So good for Forkner on that. Plus, he landed himself a monster girl, got married. Life's pretty good for Austin Forkner, but his racing career is at a pivotal point. This is, this is like an extra shot. Like, he's got more, two more shots than most people ever get. So in, you know, 
He comes back in 2024 in the outdoor season. We know he's not ready, but he still comes back anyway and kind of shows us some heart. I mean, that Washougal crash where he comes back with the ripped jersey, but the same things keep plaguing him, these falls. Well, now he's working with this lunatic, Ryan Hughes. Ryan Hughes knows riding technique. He is good, and I will not deny that in any way. But is it worth having this turncoat lunatic in your corner? I mean, this guy is an egomaniac. His behavior is off the wall. He openly admits it. I mean, he shows up at Austin's wedding looking like Neo from The Matrix, but like he just, this guy needs attention so bad. Is that someone you really want to line up with? I don't think so. Uh, I don't care how good his technique is. There's other people. I mean, look at Johnny O'Mara with the Lawrence brothers. I think these top riders, having a coach or having somebody who's been there and done that is a huge advantage. I don't think Rhino's the right guy. I wouldn't want him around my guy just because, you know, I, 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 I'm actually changing my tune on that. I used to think that he was one of these guys that just was harsh, and, but he had like a, a moral code. As a bad guy, to be likable, you've got to stand by a code. And one of those codes is you don't rat. You don't turn as soon as... You say things to people's faces. You don't go Sammy the Bull. You don't go rat. Um, if you say you're going to do something, you do something. And Ryan Hughes doesn't have that kind of character. I thought he did. That's where I made my mistake when I did my interview with him. And to see him turn the gun on me instantly, I'm like, damn. Okay, well, that shows his character. Um, we already know he's an egomaniac. He's weird. But I thought he had character. He doesn't. That's not someone I would want working with somebody who's in a vulnerable position like like Austin Forkner so yeah I mean look at look at like the Lawrence brothers back to that Johnny O'Mara do you really hear him that, hear about him that much do you see him that much you don't want a coach that wants to be in the spotlight it doesn't end well because eventually there will be a high profile split and even if you do well the, the coach is trying to take the glory I don't see Johnny O'Mara trying to take any of Lawrence's glory he's just helping them and that's what a true coach and you know somebody who really wants to help you succeed, that's what they do. So fair warning, Austin. Uh, enjoy your new Monster Girl wife. Smoke show, good on you. Congratulations. And I really hope he does good. He's got so much talent. And, you know, I, I think he might do well in 2024, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, the jury's still out. Um, and now back to the end. Speaking of turncoats and people who will turn on you, uh, Enzo Lopes. He did an interview with Steve Mathis where he said he did nothing wrong and it was legal. Well, or just because it was legal doesn't mean it wasn't wrong. There's a way to handle this. He didn't do it correctly. What you do is even if you sign a bad contract and you find out, I'm not saying I wouldn't take the star ride and I'm not saying that might not be the best thing for him. You go to Club MX as a man and say, I'm sorry, I have to get out of this contract. You thank them. You beg for their forgiveness and you but you do it as a man. You don't have your new agent send them a letter saying the contract needs to be nullified. That's just not the right way to handle it. And then to come out, so that's screwed up, no big deal. So now it all comes out. Now he says, oh, I did nothing wrong. Yeah, you absolutely did a lot wrong. And what you should do is say, yes, I'm sorry. Club MX, I screwed you over, but this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I, sh I have to take it. I think I can get to that next level on this factory team. We both know while you guys have a great bike, the star bike is the best bike. And I think I can get on the podium and win consistently. So I have to take it. Um, whatever we need to agree on, we'll agree on. I'll buy out of the contract, whatever. That's what, it, that's what he should do. And that's what he should have done. And then just own it, man. Nobody cares if you own it. If you don't own it, now he's like, oh, I did nothing wrong. Now people are kind of laying. If he does not win, if he wins, everything's forgotten. Trust me. This, is, this sport has a short memory, and the one thing that erases all bad is winning. But if he doesn't, people are going to come back on him and remember that he turned the gun on, on the people who helped him when he was down and out. And that's just never a good look. So anyway, guys, that's it. Remember, subscribe, and I'll catch you later. As you guys know, I am now a real estate agent. And I work for Berkshire and Hathaway. If you're buying a house anywhere in the country, please reach out to me. Let me set you up with an agent in your area. Yeah, I get a referral fee, but I will make sure you get an agent that knows what the hell they're doing, get you the best price for your house, or get you the best deal on your house. And yeah, they'll definitely be able to hook you up. So just email me at chriscooksymedia at gmail.com.